And here we are with another episode of Katawash Shoujo. Welcome, links here. Uh, the title is Self Study. So, yeah. Okay, so we have Self Study. We have the. I actually don't remember what was the chapter title. The entire Act 2 actually title. This distance? Something like that. Anyway, I wake up all sweaty. Oh boy. As if I had run a half marathon in my sleep. Oh boy. Why the half marathon exactly? Odd. I don't recall sleeping badly. It sends a little pang of worry through me. I would want to have my heart acting up without being able to notice it. Still, apart from this odd exhaustion, right after waking up I'm feeling... Just fine! My mouth is like sandpaper and I have nothing to drink so I have to go all the way to right here because there is tea. <laughs> to the bathroom to take my meds. On impulse I say take a shower while I am at it. While in the shower I make up my mind that this counts as morning exercise. What? If I properly compensate with, uh, with a nice half an hour walk after school. How does this count as exercise? Taking shower! What? Obviously I wouldn't want to risk possible complications by going running now. Besides Emmy will never know and I think she's giving up on me in any case. He said, but you can't give up on yourself. Go run. Walking could be nice. Anyway, just to get to know the area. I mean that again, if you are going to walk quite a lot. I'm pretty sure this will work for your health. There's a big forest in the hills behind the school. Wait, what? Wait, you want to tell me that this little park area, sort of, where you've been like once every every route, has a forest there? Okay. I mean, we should go there. Or I could go down to the convenience store. While still dabbing the moisture of my skin, I set out to find my uniform. I quickly, but I was so waiting for the uniform to be gone because, I don't know, Kenji decided, yeah, let's check out his pockets for money this time, let's not ask. Of course, I'm not serious. I'm, Kenji is not that type of person. I quickly button up my shirt and pull on my pants before going outside. Normally, during this time of the year, I'd be eagerly awaiting summer vacation. Having only been at school for a little over a week, I don't really have that kind of feeling. I'm still savoring the school life and considering the sharp and awkward turn my life has taken. I haven't had time to become preoccupied while with getting free of it. Besides, once vacations hit, it will be a nice surprise for me if I'm not expecting it. Especially with the end of terms exams looming, looming ahead. <sighs> At least I don't have any catching up to do with my studies. My diligence has finally paid off. I push myself past the boys gathered in the doorway and flop into my seat. From the corner of my eye I can see that Shiz and Misha pause their unavoidably animated conversation and turn almost simultaneously in my direction. Oh no! <laughs> they clearly want something from me. I can tell from the way Shizune smiles. It's too obnoxiously bright to be sincere and too calculated to be spontaneous. Good morning! Her greeting is made of 100% cheer and bursting energy. It's too early for that. Morning. I failed to put either of those into my response. <laughs> you don't look very energetic. The wonder. I don't feel very energetic either. I think I didn't sleep well, but I'm not sure. She slaps me in the back and greens. Ooh, that must have hurt. Oh, yeah. Cheer up a bit! It's a great day! I catch his eyes. She has a strange focused expression on her face, but she throws her brow to let direct eye contact and looks away. <laughs> That's right, you might have wanted to try getting me into the student council, but you will not even try. You know that you don't have a chance. <laughs> For a moment, I think that she's caught a glimpse of my worries somehow and is pondering how to respond. But then she quickly straightens her glasses and with them her expression. Any 
away. You were wondering if you're still interested in a student council position. I was never interested in it to begin with. Because we're going to make an offer that you can't decline. Wait, what? I wasn't really interested in the first place. And you're putting words in my mouth. Not as such, but wouldn't be nice to hang out with every day while also being useful to your school. No. Just no. Well, to tell you the truth, I kinda joined the club, so it would actually be sort of hard for me to join the council too. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, which I don't, as I said. Huh? Is that so? Which club is it, Hichan? The art club. <laughs> she doesn't like that! She do Shizuna didn't like that. Shizuna's eyes glint in a sinister way as she scolds at me. With the way she looks, I'll be expecting the art club to lose its funding before lunch break, or the art teacher to mysteriously disappear from the face of the earth. Before she manages to comment, the teacher finally enters the classroom, getting Shizuna and Misha off my back. Thank you, Muto! And sending everyone rummaging in their bags for books and pens. I mean, I think it's Muto, right? I did join the art club, but the first meeting didn't really boost my confidence. I'm not really sure what I'm do doing it for. Hey! You were not that bad. I would have done a much, much worse job than you, okay? Sure, you are of course not at the level of Rin, but... Oh, that's obvious. And I would say it would be bad if you thought... Hey, I should be drawing at her level already. Yo, Rin might be drawing for years already, I believe. Anyway. I wish I could draw like Rin. Don't wish that. But I don't know what I would do if I could. To what end would I use such skill? I don't really know. Ignoring the teacher's sleep-inducing voice, I open my notebook to an empty page and press the needle sharp graphite tip to the pencil onto it. Nice! What to draw? I can't really think of anything good to draw. As I hesitate and raise my hand, the meek black mark left on the previous blank pa page I wanted to save apparently blank paper seems aggravating. I can't even seem to get to the starting line, let alone get started. It's almost a physical feeling of being held back. Annoyingly, it reminds me of my failed attempt at jogging with Emmy. I look out of the window in desperation. Right then, a small bird takes flight from one of the cherry trees that grow. Are we zooming in? Uh, that grow everywhere on the school grounds. Why are we zooming in? It's not like we can see the bird, right? Ah, uh, I mean, he can, we can't. Anyway, I can't really see it clearly, and it's not like I could tell one tiny bear from another. But I pick it as my subject anyway. Oh, yeah. Conjuring up the image of a bear in my mind's eye, I turn my gaze back to the notebook and deliberately draw a thick line across the paper to get started. I mean... To be fair, if I was recording with uh, the old software, so mirrorless section, which I still have, I could actually use uh, like a built-in tool to draw something right now. And it would be basically the most classic version of a bird. Like, you know, basically two lines. That's how we draw birds. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to draw a bird, uh, you know, like full detail. Uh, okay, still, it's a start. Getting started is good. I slowly sketch the picture on the notebook page, the image in my brain becoming clearer as the drawing takes shape. It's really nothing, just that nameless nothing bird on paper, but that's not important. I hope it's not a pigeon, I hate pigeons. My station fades in the background along with the teacher's voice as I continue my struggle. The feathers form a simple pattern in my mind, but on paper it's a mess of too many rough lines despite my best efforts. Damn, he's good! I realize that I don't really know what a bird's wing should look like. Even if I try to think about it, I, I even put the pencil down and close my eyes for a moment, trying to trace the shape of a wing in my mind. Being this serious, this serious about it all of a sudden makes me a little frustrated. Hmm. Art school. Art, art class in middle school was the easy class in between exhausting subjects like math or Japanese. But there is this other side of art. 
to the art. The one that you see when you don't just fool around. I mean, yeah, I mean, true. To be fair, like, art classes is one of those classes that you... Are you even able to not freaking pass that? Like, how? To be fair, I mean, if I could pass art classes with... Actually, I don't remember what grade. I mean, I probably had some highest grade, basically. Not, like, 6 on a scale of 1 to 6, but I think I had a 5. So, yeah. Then again, in a lot of things. Uh, to actually get that 5, I had to use the help of the outside sources. <laughs> because I'm terrible with art, but then again, even if you give a crappy thing, you still have to pass. Like, it's impossible not to pass that. Anyway. It's almost like a completely different thing. And now I realize that my rumbling right now uh, reminded me of, uh, of a story of a football player who apparently uh, was grateful for being a football player because he uh, almost drew, you know, didn't manage to pass exactly that art class. Like, how in the world do you not manage to pass art class? God, and people like that are being paid so much. I know it's a rumbling of mine, but still, like, kind of ridiculous. Anyway. Huh. I look up to see the two girls staring at me. Mission and Susan have carried their chairs to my desk and are now standing by my side, looking at my drawing. How long have you two been there? I think you need more practice! What? He's good! Yo, he's good! Susan draws a few sharp signs in the air between herself and Misha. <laughs> She chan agrees! Rin said the exact same thing yesterday. But why did it sound less condescending? You shouldn't judge before I'm finished. Besides, you don't, you know, it's bad luck to see an unfinished piece of work. <laughs> Misha cracks an exuberant laughter. What? Don't be silly! There is no way that could be true! Whatever. Susan's eyebrows furrow dangerously, and the movements of her hands become abrupt, like the slashing of a knife. You should learn to take constructive criticism better! I would, if you'd actually offer some. I know I'm getting too defensive and that Susan is taking advantage of it, but I can't help it! <sighs> what are you two doing here anyway? Misha wags her finger admonishingly at my nose. <laughs> Chad, were you not listening to the teacher at all? We have a group assignment now. Bold of you to assume I would be in your group. <laughs> I nod bleakly and lets them take the lead. So, what do you think of the lesson for today? Not much of anything. I didn't listen to a word of it. Huh? Misha slaps her forehead and shakes her head theatrically. <laughs> what are we going to do with you, Hitchan? <sighs> Luckily, Shun and Misha together are more effective than three of uh, or four normal people, so I can mostly slack on the assignment. I try my best to offer it. Damn, this route is so different. In terms of that, right? I try my best to offer at least some assistance, but I end up being mostly useless. I mean, he was so into science back then. I guess it wasn't Muto. The teacher keeps us in class, five minutes past the lunch bells, but eventually lets us off the hook. Well, sounds like Poland. I quickly... No, yeah, because the bells are not for the students. The bells are for the teachers. <laughs> or something like that. Anyway, I quickly stuff my books into my bag while Shun and Misha carry their chairs back to their own seats. The failure of a bird drawing ends up crumpled and stuffed in my pocket as I hurry outside. 
and do something that will not be revealed to us in this continuation of the game, probably, maybe. Or maybe it will, after that morning class, and throughout the week I keep bumping into Rin. Huh. That's good. Hello. This is somewhat natural as our classrooms are adjacent, but rather than just cross paths in the hallway like people regularly do, we seem to pose at the side of each other. We invariably end up talking a little bit, or just silently hanging out together. I think I'm getting used to being quiet in Reed's company, as if it doesn't feel as awkward anymore. I am, by nature, somewhat introverted like her, so we fit together well. I mean, that's me, basically. I wouldn't say I'm an extrovert, right? I think it's actually an anom anomaly for someone in this school to be so quiet. Most people here seem to be in love with socializing. It's something that I've noticed already, even though I haven't been here for very long. People here talk a lot, and they talk all the time. It's a rare case when I see someone sitting alone, just pacing out, out or whatever. Obviously, there are people like that here too. That Hanako girl. That Hanako girl? Dude, just say Hanako. And myself, just to name two from my own class. But overall, they are a minority. At any rate, I wouldn't exactly call what Rin I do and I do socializing either, but it's something at least. These occurrences themselves don't bother me, but the fact that they happen at all does. I'd hesitate to say that we are drawn together by something, but we certainly act as if we were. However, this sense of a budding friendship is completely wrecked every time Rin opens her mouth. What? Can I listen to your heartbeat? Uh, she says this, or something else about us outrageous and I have to fend off whatever nonsense her mind has cooked up during the preceding class of subject that she is not interested in. And I say, go on. It seems Rin has taken a shine to my heart conditions as some kind of an, of an extension of her interest in the other disabilities that people here have, and the consequences of said afflictions. <laughs> as I stand in front of her for a second too long, looking as flummoxed as I am, she concludes it is necessary to further clarify her request. I know I can, but I mean, will you let me? <laughs> Why? Do I need a reason? I'm usually pretty bad with reasons. Not per se, but if you want to do it, you probably do have a reason. That's kinda clever. You are smarter than you look. Also, I'd rather you not. I think this thing should be private. Ah, oh, private. I get it. I can tell you something for if it amuses you. I'm pretty sure it will. My heartbeat does sound very weird because of the, you know, condition. <laughs> and I hear it all the time. So you're a paranoid. It's not a question. It's a statement. No, I'm not paranoid. The doctor said that abnormal attention to the heartbeat is a common symptom of my condition. You know what's crazy actually? I think I have that since I started Katawa Shoujo. Like I'm more conscious of the heartbeat itself. <laughs> and it's weird. Anyway. So for you, it's normal to be paranoid. It's not a question either. One could also say that me being like this in the first place is normal either, but what the heck? Paranoia fits me fine. Hmm. I don't think that's something that actually can fit anyone or anywhere. You know, I ate an orange today for breakfast. How was it? I am vaguely proud of myself, managing to keep up with Rin's sudden change of topic. Excellent! I don't remember when I last ate an orange. Shit, same, because it's annoying to peel one. Yeah. It's on the list of things I want to learn properly. How come you ate one then? Amy had some, so she peeled one for me. Good for you. Rin stretches her back and yawns and says nothing further. 
She throws me a glance from the corner of her eye while she watches people pass by, but I couldn't say why. I realize, though, that this is the first time I've talked naturally about my condition with anyone, in a way. Right? Right? A group of boys walk past us to Rin's classroom, but she doesn't pay them any mind. They pay none to her either. My mind wanders off, spurred by the silence. Maybe. Maybe I should have let her listen to my heart. It's not like it matters. Nothing really matters that much at the end of the day. I start feeling depressed for no reason again. It's like a tidal wave out of nowhere lowing over my consciousness, submerging me underwater. I feel a sigh coming off my mouth and I turn away from it, pretending to read a poster on the wall. It's an adver advertisement for the school festival, promoting an event almost a week past. Oh! 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 Look at that! She's acting like a proper politician, making posters and then... After the event is done, not getting rid of them. Is it like that everywhere? Like, you know, yeah, let's get those posters literally everywhere. Let's freaking put them on every freaking lamppost, every freaking fence or whatever. And after it's done, let's just leave them. What's the point of taking them off? Right? Anyway. The difference between me and Rin is that I'll be more likely than not dead before turning 30. <laughs> While she can't eat oranges without help. I can't decide which one of us is worse off. Mm. Good question. I'm not sure. Hard to tell. I mean, can you even actually compare those two situations? I try to grasp the passing of time, but it seems hard. I'm still used to the rhythm of the hospital, where trivialities such as the day of the week or time of the day didn't really matter. Everything was the same no matter what. Rediscovering the significance of time is an oddly disorienting experience, and I found myself <coughs> Enjoying the fact that I can categorize events in this fashion. The relevancy of a ticking clock is surprisingly delightful. And I decided to start wearing an analog wristwatch, something I didn't used to do before. I mean, I don't have one right now, actually. It's right there. But I don't wear it. It's fine. I mean, normally I do. Every single day. I mean, if I go out, it's a must, basically. When I find a screen on Thursday about something that's been bothering you for the entire week, it's already lunchtime. The time is somewhere between 11.06 <laughs> and 11.07, as my watch doesn't have a hand to show seconds. Same! It's the old fashioned kind of with a black leather strap and titanium casing. I mean, you've seen my watch so many times already, surely, in the previous videos, right? It's normal watch. It does look flashy, but the wristwatch doesn't need to. Yeah, I mean... Dude. The wristwatches are great. I mean, wristwatches... I basically like having something on my hands. Or, should I say, on my wrists. <sighs> you know, wristwatch here, some other crap on the other one. Anyway. Hey. Remember that sketch you made of me? How you said I look grim and gloomy or something? I'd like to know what you meant by that. She gives me a weird look and tilts her head a few degrees to the left, but doesn't say anything for a while. Well, you see... We've known each other for two weeks, and I haven't seen you smile even once. Oh, her striking observation gives me a pause. Have I stopped smiling? I have to take what she says is truth. She has no reason to lie. Something about the way she puts it annoys me. I throw the train, then try to correct my expression to look less depressed. I haven't been in the cheeriest of moods during the past few months or so. This is true. Does it show so much that someone like Rin can tell? After sold contact with me? 
Should I try to smile more at Trin? Maybe she could appreciate it. Having such a neutral face herself almost all the time. Hey, she did smile. Have I really stopped smiling? I see. Should I smile more? I don't mind either way. Be as you are. You can't help being his out anyway. But it bothers you. I just noticed it, that's all. Emmy skips along the hallway, jumps to a sharp stop when she reaches us and lightly pats her in the shoulder. Ready for lunch? Depends on what lunch is today. Remember that stew from March? Never again, vet. Let's go anyway, I'm starving! As they are about to depart, Amy turns from her friend to me, seemingly as an afterthought, and smiles charmingly. By the way, he saw. Her tone is way too sweet and soft to be sincere. I can sense the trap about to be sprung upon me by this miniature half devil. I know what she's about to say even before she continues, because I've been trying to avoid her all week. I still haven't seen a trap this entire week. But maybe I've been there when you haven't. Mm, that's impossible. I'm there all the time. But you sleep and go to class. I do those at the same time as you do. Yeah, I know. I know. I just haven't been able to pick myself up. Don't trot me out to the nurse, okay? Running just is my thing and I haven't come up with a good alternative. Why don't you come to the track meet this weekend? Maybe you will get inspired. Track meet. Yeah, people from few other schools come here for some friendly track and field action. It's on Sunday afternoon. I can't think of any reason not to go. Sure, I'll come and cheer for you. Guess you'll be running. Of course, you will get to see me beat them all. But by now, if I don't get something to eat, I'll die. See you later. Bye, Ren. I promise I will smile next time. I'll try to. I call after her as a bit of an afterthought. Afterward, I feel embarrassed about it and wonder why I said anything at all. What the freak are you doing, man? <laughs> that night, finally doubly certain that Kenji won't be barging to the bathroom, <coughs> I look into the mirror and smile at my reflection. You are basically... Uh, you are basically... Oh my god. You are basically like Nifuji in Watakoi, but he tries to uh, wink, right? He was not able to wink with one eye. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah. The, to me, uh, sorry, the me in the mirror smile like me in the bathroom looks awfully fake. Well, he saw. Well, he saw. Don't worry, you will get there. We'll carry you. To the destination you are destined to be at, whatever. <laughs> Having exhausted the books Kenji let me in just a few nights, I go back to the library, deeming it a safer alternative for getting my reading fixed. I turn on the books he had stolen while I met it. To you cause delight, I don't tell her why I got them for. Wow, you should read a lot, don't ya? Yeah, I guess I do, yeah. I mean, I do. Even. I think it's weird. I, I think I might have a reading problem. Maybe I'm a junkie. No, no. I mean, that way. It's not weird at all. And being addicted to reading is a lot better than being addicted to, to something else. Yeah, I know. It was a joke. I smiled her originally and dropped the books on the counter so we can check them out. I feel tired, so I sit down in the vacant chair in front of her desk. While Yuko goes through the modest pile of reading material found, I let my gaze wander around the library. At the tables, a pair of girls is chattering in harsh tones rather than working on their homework. The short-haired one notices me looking in the direction and waves at me. When I raise my hand back, they glance at each other and giggle in unison. What? I'm not sure how I f should feel about that, so I decided it's a good thing. The one who waved me has a horrible case of epilepsy. How do you know that? Whatever. I saw her having an attack a few days ago. It was one of the most disturbing and scary things I've seen in a very long time. I mean, epilepsy is not a joke, you know. 
Yet there is, there she is, happily chirping away about whatever as if she doesn't have a car in the world. Good. Great. You know, this school is really something else. Yuko raised her eyes from the book she was going through, slightly startled. She adjusted, adjusts her glasses and puts on a nervous, confused smile. What do you mean? I don't really know how to explain it. It's just that everyone is so... Active? Or... How should I put it? It's not just a festival thing. I think even though I haven't been here that long, but it's everything. People talk more, work harder, and just are... You know, more than in any other school I've seen before. I'm struggling for words, but feels like speaking honestly. This school feels so alive. It's refreshing. It makes me feel like I'm stuck. Hello, because you are kind of in the... Normal type of school. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say... This one maybe, but I think it's ref it must must be refreshing being in an environment like this, right? Sure, there were some people like this in my school too, but not as many, and it feels more intense somehow. I think if I had to pin it down to one thing, that the students here really appreciate going to school. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, me neither. Suddenly I realized that I've just been bubbling my thoughts to Yuko, out of the blue. She's a bit of a jumpy person, so I fear I might have made a bad impression. She's looking at me with what I hope is curiosity rather than horror, so I figure she's alright. Uh, sorry for suddenly talking about weird stuff like this. I didn't mean to trouble you. Oh no, it's not troubling. I'm happy to listen if you feel like talking. It makes me feel a little reliable too. Yuko smiles sweetly and a little bit ironically at that, I respond with a thankful smile of my own. As she pushes the neat stack of books across the counter, I stand up and gather them in my arms. Here you are. Thank you. I guess we'll meet each other again. Please come here anytime. Yuko's kindness is heartwarming. You can count on it. See you later. Yuko deserves her own root. Why does she not have a root? I don't know that, but we'll continue Rin's root tomorrow. For now, hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.